everyone so today i'm going to show you guys a fun way on how to make your own gladiator sandal you can do any color combination i'm very excited to share this look with you because i actually took the time to do this because i wanted to wear these for my birthday and it took me it was a little hard because i wanted my own design but you guys go ahead and check out the video on how to make it i think you guys will love it so we're going to get ready to take your plain sandal from this to this Okay, so to start, here is a picture of all the items you're going to need. You can go ahead and screenshot these. I'm going to talk a little bit more about each piece as we use it. And I will go ahead and list the items down below, a complete list, so that it will be easy to follow for you guys. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and start prepping your items. You definitely want to use charms for this type of sandal. I got a little bit ambitious and I wanted to make my own, so we can just go ahead and speed through that. Choosing the charms is like the funnest part, so get creative with it. They have a huge selection at Michael's. Most of the ones I purchased here were at Michael's. I wanted more of a mermaid sailor kind of theme. So the next step is to make your tassels. I'm pretty sure they have some at Joann's or Michael's, but this I decided to make because I wanted the color combinations to stick between teal and pink, and since I already had this thread, I thought it would be a perfect match with the pink I already had. You want to cut the thread into sections of three or four, depending how many you're going to use. And remember that you're going to fold it in half, so you choose the length. It could be short or long. You fold it in half to create a loop, and with the same thread, you tie it. As soon as you finish tying it, you go ahead and get ready to cut it. This is where you choose your length, and you want to make sure you cut it very evenly. Depending on the type of style that you want, this is a step that you can skip if you are able to find some ribbon with the fringe detail that you like. I was not able to find it, so I had to make it. So pretty much here what you're making is your own tassel ribbon. So you want to go ahead and do a few of these, about four per foot, if, depending on the ribbon that you have. Once you finish wrapping the section that you're working on, you want to go ahead and cut an extra piece of string and you use that same color to tie it. Next you're going to take needle and thread and you're going to sew the fringes that you just made to the ribbon of your choosing. Now a lot of people choose to glue this, I pretty much found it a little bit better and more manageable to sew it, although it does take more time. Once you're done sewing all the fringe detail to the ribbon, you want to go ahead and start cutting them. Don't choose the length just yet, it's better to have them longer and then cut shorter if you need to. Slightly even them out, keep them longer than you really want them. Now it's time to make your pom-poms. You go ahead and wrap them around. I will have another video showing you guys exactly how to use the pom-pom maker if you don't know how to use it or never have before. This was my first time using it. It was pretty easy and I purchased the pom-pom makers at Joann's. They do have different sizes, although the larger ones were really tempting to get. It turned out to be that I ended up using the smaller ones. So once you have your pom-poms done and all the charms are ready to go, now you're ready to start sewing on the shoe. Most ribbon you can glue straight onto the shoe. This piece, however, I decided to glue and sew at the same time because it was a little heavier from the fringe detail that we added. You want to place on the ribbon very gently and make sure you clean off any excess glue that you have. The great thing about using this sandal was that it was very soft leather, so using a needle and thread was very easy. If it's a very thick leather, it might be a little bit harder, so make sure you keep an eye on that when you're purchasing for one. These I did purchase at Charlotte Russe for $12.99. You don't need to sew all the way through. Just go ahead and sew three times, one on each end and one in the middle. You 
finally, you're ready to take the second set of ribbon that you have. This one was purchased at Joann's. You want to go ahead and glue that very lightly. And once you're done gluing and you let it set for a little bit, you want to go back in there and sew just the ends for extra reinforcement. Once you get closer to the other second set of ribbon, you want to go ahead and just sew to the ribbon, so ribbon on ribbon instead of going to the leather because it will be a little too thick. Then you move on to the second set of ribbon or wherever else you're going to glue it. This piece, since I glued it to the strap, I did not sew. You decide what you're gluing where. I suggest you try on the sandal and you see how it fits you and you decide where you would like each ribbon to fit exactly. On this specific style, because of how it fit on me, I wanted to show a little bit of the color going towards my ankle. At this point, after trying on the sandal, I realized that I actually wanted the fringe to be much shorter for more of a delicate look. So this is where you can kind of go back and adjust and cut some more from the fringe detail if you need to. Make sure you have really good cutting scissors and large enough so you can cut the fringe very evenly. And now the funnest part, the pom-poms. So now you're ready to sew on the pom-poms that you initially made. You wanna go ahead and pierce the needle through the knot that you made on the pom-pom. So the needle's going right through the middle of the knot of the pom-pom and through the center of it. Once you have sewn it through two to three times, you wanna go ahead and now cut the little ends of the pom-poms that were left. Don't cut your thread just yet, you're just kind of figuring out where you're going to sew it because how you position it will be how the pom-pom ends up looking. So once you do that, you want to go ahead and pierce it through one more time through the bottom and then what you do is that you bring it back up and you sew it to the knot of the bottom of the pom-pom. So you hide it in between the leather and the pom-pom. In other words, to reinforce your thread before you finalize the cut is that you are going to make the knot to the pom-pom itself. Again, not under the leather. Go ahead and continue the same process for all the pom-poms and add them wherever you want. Have fun with this! Now you're ready to move on to the charms. For this, you're going to need a larger needle. This is not the same needle that you use to sew on the pom-poms. The whole point of this is that you want to create a hole large enough in order to put in the rings for the charms. So now you're ready to pierce the hole through the leather. If you need the table for extra support, I had to use it in some situations. The leather was very soft in the sandal, so it wasn't a huge issue. You want to go ahead and push that all the way through. You're going to see a tiny hole, which is a good thing. You want to go ahead and take one of your rings and put that through first. The charms did come with the ring itself, but I decided to use some thinner ones that I had at home, which, which turned out to be better because the thicker the ring, the harder it is to put through the leather. Once you have your ring inserted and ready to go, you want to go ahead and choose your first charm. And if it does come with the ring itself, you want to take some pliers and open it up. You then take the charm and put it on the ring on the sandal and you lightly press it together with some pliers to close it. You now have your first charm and you're ready to move on to the other one. On the ends, we save the best for last. We're going to go ahead and add some tassels to the ends and some charms. You go ahead and follow the same process. For your tassels, just make sure you bring through all the threads through the ring itself. And right next to the tassel, we add a little pearl just to add some effect. Now again, have fun with all this. You can add the charms wherever you like. If you decide to want to make your tassel shorter, you can always go ahead and do that and adjust the length. And there you have it, your very own mermaid pom-pom sandals. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed filming it. Please make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video. A lot more cute stuff coming. And please follow on Instagram at Queen Bee Fashion Blog. Bye!